Hey guys, Frank C Z here. So I got a little uh, e-bike that I'm gonna try and fix it up. Got it for super cheap, and I'm gonna unload it. It's getting to be fall around here. Pretty much, all the leaves are coming off the trees. Be cleaning up a bit. I'm gonna build a little lean-to off here. Maybe I can store my four-wheeler and the tractor in there for plowing, and I can just kind of bring it out. But well, anyways, here's the little e-bike I got. See how see how good I can fix it up. Not bad. It's got pedals, all that stuff. They're not in very good shape. It's a hub motorbike and 72 volt. I think it's only 500 watt motor in there, but I think I can fix that up a bit. And I'm gonna see how much uh, voltage I can put to it. Two of my 40 volt A123 packs will give me the 72 volts, and two of my uh Honda packs will give me uh, 96 volts. So we'll see. I guess it'd be a low 96 volts. It'd be like a 88 volts or something like that. But not bad. A little bit worn. I think it's got about 550 kilometers on it. But mainly I wanted the platform. Like it's got front and back disc brakes. Actually it's got double front disc brakes. It's got, it's decent, you know. I think I can, it's got lead acid batteries in it right now. But I hear there's a top bank and a bottom bank. I'll probably end up taking all this out and making my own box for the batteries. Yeah. Got all the turn signals, all that stuff. Like I said, I mainly just want the platform. And, you know, it's pretty hard to even find a, a street bike without a motor in it to make an electric bike out of. But here this only goes about 32 kilometers an hour right now. Or whatever. I think it's been bypassed, so it goes maybe 60 kilometers or 50 kilometers per hour but I'd like to see if I can get it to go around 150 kilometers an hour and kind of just use it for around here it's not bad though it's in good shape all the brakes work there's some problems like the pedal see his pedals bent on it there I'm hoping I can just remove those pedals because I'm pretty far out here and I don't really plan on driving it on the road kind of thing. It's kind of, well, like on any major roads. So what I'm going to do is unload it and get it in my garage. And it says the batteries are still good and everything, so I'll give it a try. And, uh, yeah, just see how it all works out. I'm going to mess around with it, probably remove all the plastics. It was stored outside, so it does have some rusty spots, and the plastics are a little fading, and little stuff. Some of the bolts are rusting, so I may uh, repaint it black after I clean it up. Anyways, I'm gonna move my truck over to this here, and then I can roll this out of here. It's freaking heavy, by the way. It's probably a 350 to 500 pound bike. It's pretty, I don't think you'd be able to pedal it, especially with these arms on these pedals. Like they're pretty much not much, pretty worthless pedals if you ask me. Anyways, thanks guys. This would be video one, the introduction on this project. Thanks. So I got it all unloaded. I didn't get it with the keys. And pretty much everything is wrecked on it. 
like there's the charging now it is a 72 volt battery system in here so honestly that's not okay and i did take a voltage measurement between those two we're getting about 30 volts also the charger doesn't work and who knows i don't even know if this bike works i kind of bought it so cheap that it was sight unseen like i did look at it but i didn't get to test it or check it now 72 volts there should be six 12 volt batteries in there so the plan is to take the batteries out and parallel them all and get them charging into it on a 12 volt charger and uh we'll see if the batteries are good you know 72 volt battery sitting at 30 volts is probably not good so the batteries are probably cooked uh i did hammer the ignition where's my screwdriver i'll show you like even with the 30 volts it does uh does do something but obviously it's not going to move and turn on or really anything at 30 volts. It's not very good. So oh, there we go. It's saying it's at 40 volts. Like I said, it is does work. It's not uh, perfect. Front tire's flat. Lots of stuff to do. Uh, yeah, so I'll just go from there. And I'm going to take the batteries out, give them a good charge, put them back in. See what happens. Supposedly, this thing is already modified a bit. So, we'll see. I kind of want this thing to go around. 150 kilometers an hour not 32 kilometers an hour so we'll see what i gotta do to get to there i may buy a new hub motor for it guess comes with a 500 watt hub motor so probably upgrade that to about a 5000 watt we'll see what that does anyways guys that's just the intro of this build or whatever not just kind of it's already built it just needs to be needs to be tinkered with a bit like i said if i wanted to keep it 72 volt two of those packs would give me the 72 volts and if i want to go 96 volt two of those packs will give me the 96 volt and honestly if i could get it up to 96 volt i could probably fit four of those packs into this space you got a lower battery bank and an upper battery bank so and between those i'm sure i could get uh you know a couple of these batteries in there for sure anyways thanks guys so i know i should be working on other stuff but i don't want to let these batteries die anymore i'm gonna stop after i hook them all up into parallel and get them charging in 12 volts so yeah i just wanted to write down how this goes so we got negative top battery positive top battery negative bottom battery positive bottom battery and then these two go to the to the controller so there's a from p negative to b or the top battery to the bottom battery this is like a series connection so there'll be three batteries in here and three batteries in here should be <clears throat> so anyways i'm gonna take this thing apart so i can get to these wires actually probably don't even need to i could probably just remove them at the battery might just do that might be uh, better in case I decide I'm going to put those lead acids back in here right away just to test it out, see if I can get anything working. But I've already been looking online. I think I'm going to get a whole kit, like a throttle, a 
comes with both handles. It comes with a pure sine wave controller and it comes with the back hub. And I'll get that in like 96 volt and it'll be like 5,000 watts or whatever between, I guess between five and 8,000 watts possibly. And then I'll kind of go from there to see what else I need to do. I do want the blinkers to work and I want the brake light, anything safety wise to work, but I might buy a new pedal set for there just so they're on there and I may, yeah, whatever, we'll see. I just want to have a cool little bike, even if it's just to ride around the block. Anyways. Thanks guys. Quick video on how this goes back together. Positive, negative, jumper, jumper. That big old spider. Nice. Anyways, we're gonna take this positive terminal off. That goes to this thing here. These two both go to that, so pretty easy. Nice, nice. And the bottom is the same way, so positive on this side, negative on that side. Series connection goes, yeah, this way, that way. Easy. Thanks. So, it also looks like this battery box here is welded all around, this bottom one. Top one isn't, bottom one is. Uh, it's probably going to come out of there, I'm going to have to make my own battery box. And yeah, I definitely won't be keeping that size of battery. Like if I use these ones, I'm gonna have to make something this long. I'm not gonna cut this either. So yeah. I have to, ah, we'll see which batteries I wanna use. I definitely don't wanna keep it stock, but if it's gonna cost me $5,000 to do this, I'm probably not gonna do that either. We'll see, we'll see what I can find. I need a 16 inch, uh, whatever, 5,000 watt motor that's gonna fit all these specs. Like this shaft has to be the right size. Pretty much everything has to be a match for this to work. Disc brake on this side. Uh, I will be able to remove this disc brake if I needed to put this on and it had the same bolt pattern but as you can see it does have a disc brake attached right to the motor so and I'm not 100% if I'm going to keep this pedal pedal bike or not I may try and get it uh, safetyed and insured as a street bike as an electric street bike we'll see I it's no honestly it's pointless to have a vehicle that goes 30 kilometers an hour in the country like it takes you a half an hour to get pretty much anywhere by car so you're not going to be using something like this to go to the store if it takes you two hours to get there back when it's only a 15 minute ride you know what i mean anyways thanks guys so let's get a little voltage check on these Six on a twelve volt battery. Yeah, I'd definitely be surprised if these come back, but we will try. Anyway, I'm gonna parallel them all. At least they're all exactly the same voltage which means they may come back the same, so, anyways, thanks guys, alright, let's see if we can get anything out of this, that's supposed to be the two amp setting, it's definitely sucking in power, Eight 
going up. It's only in the two amp setting, so Let's see how they do. Definitely pulling in a lot of current. But it should be in the ten to fourteen volt range, not five volts, so once it hits its eleven volts somewhere in there it'll start backing off current would be more as rated. I've got it on the 2 amp charge right now and it's pushing 8 amps. So It does have a 10 amp feature so it can actually handle the 2 amps or the 7 amps. Should be able to handle it no problem. I wouldn't want to switch it over to the 10 amp because it would probably max it out. But if I keep it on the low amperage until we get up to a higher voltage then Pretty good possibility these batteries aren't gonna come back to life so i'll pretty much have to make some kind of a battery for this no matter what which if i'm gonna make a 96 volt battery i might as well start with that instead of making a 72 volt and a 96 volt battery in the future just to ride it for a month before it snows so you know Yeah, I'll just let this guy go for a while here. See what we can get out of it. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep it like that for a bit. Thanks, guys. So they are a little bit bigger, a couple inches on either side. But if I put them in that way, I could easily get two. I'm pretty sure I could get two beside each other. And then two more on top of each other. Which would give me one of these packs is 28 amp hours. So, you know, 56 amp hour, 96 volt pack capable of discharging at 400 amps. So, I, if I got a, you know, 100 amp controller. 100 times 96 is, you know, 9,000 watts. And I think a 5,000 watt would probably be sufficient. But between 5 and 8,000 would be optimal for that kind of setup. Yeah, I'll see. And these batteries are actually probably going to be okay. That's one way to tell is if they come up slowly, it's better. That means that the capacity is still there and you're recharging that capacity. If, you, if they're sitting at 5 or 6 volts and they go right up to 13 or 14 volts, that means there's no capacity left in your batteries. They're not getting hot or nothing, so they are taking it well I think they're still in the nine and a half volt range here so I can do it on hand yeah 
so we're going up really slow now but we are still going up so that's good I think I think they might be okay and doing this maybe I'll throw my 12 volt inverter on here and discharge them a bit and then charge them up again it'll kind of balance them all out really well too so we're still we're still above seven amps on the two amp setting so like I said should be capacity left in these if they're charging up really slow like this so anyways thanks guys so this will pretty much be the end of the video for this part yeah probably be yeah, we'll see. I don't know when I'll get back to this, but these all paralleled 32 amp hours. You're looking at almost 200 amp hours of batteries uh, in one, and I'm doing about 7 to 8 amps. So we're looking at about 24 hours here to charge this. And yeah, it'll probably start cutting down after a certain voltage too. So I'll probably it probably be quite a bit to keep it going at full blast. And like I said, once it gets higher up in the voltage, the amperage will come down on the charger. So It is a good charger, though. I'm pretty happy with this little guy. It's, it's got a boost, too. So you can do 2 amp, 10 amp, and start a vehicle with it. So. Yeah. Anyways, guys, like I said, this is pretty much going to be a winter project for me. And uh, when I have time kind of project. And, yeah, I do got a lot of other projects on the go. Like the bandsaw mill. And got to start getting my firewood finished. And I do have a couple other solar jobs on the go. And people seem to call me quite often now for solar stuff, so... I'm getting busier. But, yeah, I'm just kind of... It is what it is. And, like I said, I would like to have an electric vehicle. Especially the way things are going with the world. Everyone is really pushing electric vehicles. And gas prices are already getting insane. I think I've paid... $1.45 for a liter yesterday at a gas station, which is pretty outrageous. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. Not to mention, it sucks when you have to drive somewhere, so. Anyways, guys. Thanks for watching. And like and subscribe if you want to see some more about what I'm going to do to this bike. I think it's a pretty good platform to work with. Like, if this battery box was in here, you could easily put a motor in this bike and have it a, a you know, like nice. It'd be pretty cool to take my uh, two-stroke 250 motocross liquid-cooled bike engine out of my dirt bike and put it in this. But yeah, she would go pretty good. But anyways, I want to have an electric bike or electric vehicle and I can't really afford a car, so that's my next best option is a cool bike. Anyways, thanks guys. Uh, hope you enjoy, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.